Welcome to the Ask Dr. Deanna Show. I'm Dr. Deanna Holgren, your host. Join me weekly as I cover various health-related lifestyle medicine topics that you get to request. This show is for anyone who wants to proactively improve their health position. I hope you enjoy the show. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Deanna podcast. I'm excited that you're with me today. And today, I want to get into something that might be a little heavy uh, as far as a topic, but it's super important right now. And I just want you to know that I care so much. I know so many of you personally, and I care so much about you. And so I want to unpack this today. And basically today, I want to talk about something. Um, in medicine, we call it metabolic syndrome. And it's basically when people have, you know, kind of a combination of hypertension, diabetes, um, obesity, and elevated cholesterol. So if you have any of those, even just one of them, I want you to listen in today uh, because we really want to tackle that. Right now, especially more than ever, this is one of the most important things that we can do for our health uh, is even if it's just 20, 30 pounds uh, that we have to lose, we want to lose it. Uh, if it is our blood pressure is out of control, we want to work on that and get that under control. And there are so many things that we can do to control the diabetes, to control uh, you know, the cholesterol uh, through diet, through nutrition, through exercise. And why does this matter so much? Because today, more than ever, uh, one of the biggest issues we're seeing, especially when it comes to COVID, people who get really sick usually have some of those things going on. And so if you can reverse, if you can, you know, eliminate even one of those or, you know, better yet, all of them, uh, what a difference that can make for you to be able to uh, basically be around for your family when it really matters. So let's dive right in, right? And uh, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on there. Uh, in, in a sense, uh, you know, when you look at what's happening, you know, it, it's basically an underlying disorder of energy utilization and storage, okay? I know that that sounds, you know, all fancy and whatever, but it's an underlying disorder of energy utilization and storage. What do I mean by that? It, I mean that we're not properly using the energy that we're putting in our bodies. And for many of us, that means that basically we're burning sugar. You know, we're eating every three hours, we're burning sugar, and we really need to move to fat burning. We want to burn fat and we want to get rid of some of the extra fat in our body. Sometimes people can have something called normal weight obesity, where they basically, if you do a fat measurement on them, they actually have a high uh, percentage of body fat, even though their weight might be in the normal category. And that's because they are carrying visceral fat or organ fat. And that kind of plays into this whole metabolic syndrome and, you know, who gets sick and, and so forth. Um, but basically, when we see this, you know, it, it has to do with an, with insulin resistance, for sure. It leads to insulin resistance. It leads to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or just fatty liver. You hear that a lot. It leads to polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, and it also leads to an increased risk for cardiovascular disease as well. So I can guarantee Guarantee the things that I, you know, just started with, um, you know, for those people who are having to have, um, you know, bypass surgery or any kind of intervention, they've got some of that going on that is playing a role. And so let's talk a little bit about how this happens. Well, first of all, um, when we eat a lot of sugar, okay, and you might say, well, I don't eat a lot of sugar. I eat a really healthy diet. I eat a bunch of whole grains and, you know, orange juice and fruit and whatever. Okay, that's sugar, you guys. That is sugar. Um, the orange juice, it's sugar. Okay. So many things have sugar. You have to turn it around and look at the grams, look at the sugar in the product, look at the number of carbohydrates in the product. And, you know, I had somebody just today, we were talking about diet inventory, and this is someone who thought that they were relatively low carbohydrate. And when I said, what do you eat for breakfast? added it up and it was 100 grams of carbohydrates for what they thought was their healthy breakfast. So that's too much. So sugar um, in the pure form and then also in, you know, especially those simple carbohydrates, that would be potatoes, uh, white rice, uh, pasta, you know, French fries, all that stuff um, leads to elevated blood triglycerides. Okay. It will cause the blood trig triglycerides to increase. And then we end up with increased visceral fat, organ fat. Well, organ fat then contributes to this insulin resistance. 
Then we see an increase in this thing called um, tumor necrosing factor alpha, okay, TNF alpha, which causes an increase in inflammatory cytokines, okay? So you guys, you have heard them talk about this, you know, cytokine storm and, you know, people going into this inflammatory state, right? Well, that's why some of this works into it. Uh, It's because when you have those things, that metabolic syndrome, you're going to have an elevated tumor necrosing factor. You're going to be more likely to have, you know, some of those inflammatory cytokines. So we want to correct that, okay? We want to get this under control. Um, When we see this happening, we also end up with, you know, increased fat around the belly. Um, And then sometimes you'll, again, we'll end up with increased inflammation as well. And you know what? Even the fat cells can hurt. Okay. So when you have inflammation of your cells, I'm not just talking about, you know, muscle cells and, you know, liver cells and heart cells and and brain cells, uh, but even fat cells. And when fat cells are inflamed, they're toxic, they're inflamed, they actually hurt. And, uh, you know, for a lot of people, that's called fibromyalgia. You know, they don't want to be hugged because it hurts when you hug them, uh, especially the, you know, any fat that they have. We all have some fat along the back of our arms. It's not supposed to hurt when you touch that. If it does, it's a sign. It's your body's, uh, you know, way of telling you there's something wrong. You need to do something about this and and get rid of some of those things. So how do we do this? Okay. So to me, when when I look at this whole metabolic syndrome, I just say it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It is the perfect storm uh, that gets people into trouble, particularly when they catch this virus. So what can we do immediately? You can make a change today. That's what I love about nutrition and I love about health is that some people sometimes people feel discouraged or they feel like, well, what can I possibly do? You know, I'm I'm, you know, maybe a hundred pounds overweight. You know, how can I possibly tackle this? And what I want you to know is that you can. You absolutely can and you can start today. It doesn't have to be in the morning. It can be any time of the day. You can start right now. So the first thing to do is to reduce those carbs. You have to become a master carbohydrate counter. You got to count your carbs and you got to get them ideally below 50 grams a day. If you are really concerned about this, then I would drop them even further. If you are pre-diabetic, you're fighting some significant insulin resistance, I'd con- I'd consider dropping them to 20 to 30. Uh, but dropping that carbohydrate content immediately. So count the carbs, figure out what foods are free foods, what foods won't move the needle on your insulin won't cause you. So when we eat carbohydrates, blood sugar goes up. My my pancreas makes a bunch of insulin to bring that blood sugar down uh, because the pan- the insulin sends the message, get that sugar out of the bloodstream and it's going to send the message to store it as fat. So it's a messenger hormone, the insulin that says store that sugar as fat. So I want to pull that level down significantly by reducing my carbs so that my insulin is not sending that message to store as fat. The other thing that we can do is fast. If you have not listened to the podcast on intermittent fasting, there are several of them now. Uh, You want to go back and take a listen uh, to that because that is such a great tool and it's free of all things. It's so easy. Uh, But starting with a 12-hour fast and that's fasting, you know, if you ate at seven o'clock at night, no calories again until seven. 7 a.m. That's 12 hours. And then pushing it even further to 16 hours can make such a difference for people. And we go into detail uh, on uh, the podcast about intermittent fasting, but that is going to make a huge difference. And then the next thing is to get moving. Okay. So three quick tips uh, to help you reverse all that we talked about in the very beginning. It is immediately reduce your carbohydrate content down to no more than 50 grams, uh, sometimes as low as 20 grams a day. Uh, and And then uh, fast, okay, do the intermittent fasting. Uh, And then third is get moving, get those steps in, okay? Ideally, you want at least 10,000 steps a day. And, you know, you might be saying, well, I'm so overweight or I've got bad knees or I've got bad back or whatever, I can't move. Guys, there are other ways that you can move, okay? You just have to find them. Maybe it's in a swimming pool. That counts as steps, okay? As long as you're moving and being active. Uh, I have had some patients in their 80s who, who got 
got a peddler, okay? They watch TV and pedal. That's not the preferred exercise method, you guys. Uh, but if you are in your 80s and, and, and you know, you're having trouble moving, hey, it's better than nothing. It's at least steps uh, that they're getting in. And it actually has made a difference. I had somebody who dropped about 40 pounds uh, just by doing that alone. Uh, there are a lot of low carbohydrate programs out there that you can follow, uh, that you can plug into that will help you along the way. Okay. Especially right now in the month of January, you know, everybody's looking at what do I do to get healthy? You know, looking at weight loss, looking at, you know, starting the new year, right? So, so why not decide that this is the year? Now is the time for you to manage through diet, exercise, and proper nutrition for you to manage that insulin resistance or that prediabetes to manage, you know, help your, your blood pressure. I have patients all the time who drop 20, 30 pounds and then they no longer need blood pressure medication. That's, of course, not true for everybody, but for a lot of patients, it has to do with the weight. Uh, so, you know, now is the time to, to invest in yourself and get healthy. And then on another note, you guys, I just want to throw out there, you know, some of the things that I've seen um, there that, that have helped um, from just boosting the immune system, okay? And that's actually going to be next week's talk as well. But boosting the immune system... I love um, NAC, which is called N-acetylcysteine, helps boost your glutathione levels. Um, I love quercetin, uh, zinc, vitamin D, and vitamin C. And there is a product that I really like. I think I've mentioned it before, but it's made by Orthomolecular. It's called Orthomune. Uh, they came out with that just in the last year, and it has all five of those combined together. Um, if you're looking for where can I get that, visit our website and we can give you information on it, um, deannaholdren.com for that. Next week, we're going to take a deep dive into healthy immune system. What can you do to naturally boost your immune system and have a strong protection as we head into these winter months. So thanks so much for joining me and have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed that episode. For more information, visit me at DeannaHoldren.com. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Deanna Holdren. I really want to hear from you, so message me. I love taking your messages and creating topics from them. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share my show with those who have an interest in health and wellness. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week.